Hi everyone, I'm Lucy, I'm from Notum, and welcome back to our series on the monorepo starter. In the previous video I've introduced you our template, what tech stack you can expect and why we chose these technologies. So if you missed the video, you can check it out in the description below. And for today I'm excited to show you how you can clone our repository and start building projects with top-notch SEO, performance and accessibility, all optimized for real-world results. So don't waste hours setting up and let's try it. Getting started is super easy. First, just make sure you have your Docker desktop instance running so the container for the database can create and just clone the repository from our GitHub. So let's just copy the URL and clone it to your VS code. After choosing where you want to save the project, just run yarn at the root level in the terminal to install all the necessary packages. Since this template is designed as a monorepo, Yarn will automatically install node modules for the root directory as well as for both the Strapi backend and the frontend applications. This structure ensures all the applications can share packages across the project. Meanwhile, as our build is running, we can configure our environmental variables by simply copying and pasting the provided examples in the .env example files for both the applications for the Strapi as well as for the UI. A critical step not to overlook. Please read all three README files carefully. We've put significant effort into making these documents so they'll serve you as a valuable guide in the future. The root readme provides an overview of the text stack, key features available in the repository, useful scripts or detailed installation instructions. The readme within the UI folder dives into the project structure, theming options and best practices for using this template effectively. Following these guidelines will help you avoid common errors and maximize the potential of this repository. So once the build process is complete, we can build both applications by running yarn build from the terminal at the root level. As you can see, the terminal automatically splits into two sections, one for Strapi and another for the UI. So you can observe both instances running separately. Additionally, a database container is created during this process, if you noticed, and the Strapi admin registration screen will pop up uh, automatically. So let me just quickly fill in the necessary information to get everything set up. And we are in. So this is our Strapi content manager. As you can see, there are already some default collection types and single types. I'll dive, dive into those a bit later. For now, the first thing you'll want to do is sync your configuration to ensure you will have all the necessary permissions and avoid any unnecessary errors. Simply sync everything to start with a clean slate and eliminate any inconsistency. All right, so now let's take a look at our UI. So this is our main page. Uh, we have some public pages as well as those which requires an authentication. As I mentioned in the introduction video, we are using NextOut, which is already fully configured, including forms and validations. You can check it out in the code. The page builder is set up to handle dynamic pages as we saw earlier in the Strapi admin. Additionally, here's some documentation that I highly recommend reading to Rofly to get the most out of the setup. Okay, now let's head back to the Strapi admin and try to create a testing dynamic page. 
start by filling in a unique slug which will be displayed in the URL. For now let's choose one component, for example the hero section and just fill in some text fields. Uh, don't forget to publish your changes as they won't be visible until you do. Once published, let's check it out. Head to the dynamic pages, click on our test page and voila, our beautiful hero banner is there. Simple as that. So to now give you a bit more context, let's take a look at the code. Uh, navigate to the UI directory, then locale, builder and page folder. Here you will see a pre-configured fetch function that retrieves content from Strapi using the unique slug. The content is rendered by our page builder which maps each component dynamically. Uh, for instance, let's check out our hero component. I noticed it doesn't have any background, so let's add, for example, a nice blue, blue colored background. And just like that, our hero component looks so much better. <laughs> Uh, the template also comes with several default components you can experiment with uh, thanks to Tailwind and the ShedCN library. Adjusting style is incredibly easy. So in the next videos we'll dive deeper into the functionality and explore how to effortlessly create beautiful components. For now, with our client's permission, I'd like to showcase one of the websites we recently built using this template. The best part is that it only took a couple of days to deploy. So as you can see, the website is built using the page builder with beautifully styled components thanks to the ShedCN and Telvint. What's even more impressive is what you can achieve with this template in just a few hours. We used our best practices, uh, optimized SEO, performance and accessibility to that point where the site scores nearly 100% on tools like PageSpeed Insights. So this template truly sets you up for success from the very start. Alright, I hope I'll see you in the next videos. Happy coding!